Here we are, Bravo chapter. Yeah. For those just tuning in, kind of don't know the drill, these are supplements to the book Unafraid, which you can buy wherever wherever books are sold, or you can go to eddiepenny.com. These are kind of extra director's cut comments on it. So if you haven't read the book or listened to it, this might not make a lot of sense, so go do that. Buy one for your friends too. Right. And, or five um, friends. It's up yeah. to you. Ten's a nice round number. Okay, ten. Ten it is. So today we're going to talk about the second chapter, which is the Bravo chapter. Yep. Our last one was a, was a little bit longer because we had to cover 18 years of your life. Now we're only talking about really a few days. Right. So you're in Paris Island. Yep. You, you're right around your 18th birthday. Describe for us that have never been there and have only seen Full Metal Jacket. What the what are the DIs, the drill instructors? What are they like? What do they look like? How do they act? Marine Corps boot camp, Paris Island. So Marine Corps has got two different sites. They got San Diego for, I think it's west of the Mississippi. Okay. And then you have Paris Island, South Carolina, which is just outside of Beaufort. Uh, that's east of the Mississippi River. That's kind of how they, they separate them, I believe. But yeah, it, they're very intense. Very intense. They've got crazy weird voices because they're always speaking very stern or yelling. The the whole time, like you can just hear their voices change. Like getting hoarse. Yeah, it's crazy uh, throughout it. But they're very intense and you just don't want to mess with them because they're very scary. <laughs> but they're also kind of, you want to be like them, right? They're studs. Yeah, they're this, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, their their uniform is always perfect. Like everything they do is like the the running, the the calisthenics, the the humping, the shooting, whatever, whatever, whatever they do. Humping, by the way, is long walks with your rucksack. Um, but whatever they do, they were just like, perfect their stuff was tight and right all the time all the time they're those mentors that we talk about yeah you look pretty at much you're like man i want like just want to be squared away like this guy i want to be squared away squared away like this guy so which is why a- there's a uniform problem in the marine corps like oh i gotta make sure my uniform is perfect but they which is there's nothing wrong with that but if there's something wrong with it when you concentrate on that more, more than, than your job right that's where there's a problem right which is one of the reasons why i left you get there so what's a day in the life of a Marine recruit. I can't wait for this day to be over. <laughs> uh, you get up early and you do physical training. So PT, uh, usually a run calisthenics, push ups, might be doing boxing, pugil sticks. Um, were those workouts, you being a competitive swimmer, an athlete, were they challenging or, or within kind of, they were, they were challenging because remember I, um, I swam until my junior year, so my senior year, I took, took off. off. I got a little fluff on me. Nice. Uh, so yeah, I, I lost some weight, definitely for sure. And you only you're only eating three meals a day. So how's the food? Not bad. Okay. Not bad at all. I love cafeteria food. Dude, there's just like so many things you can choose from. That's like I was picturing uh, John awesome. Belushi in uh, Animal House. There you go. The yeah, yeah. So we did. Uh, you would do the PT, then you go have breakfast, and you do whatever you're supposed to do: rifle drilling classes. Uh, they're just learning to be a Marine. Then right. you got lunch and you do the same thing until dinner. And then after dinner, I can't remember what we did before bed, but lights are out like early cause you're getting up early. So pro- lights are out at probably like eight or nine. Take care of yourself at nighttime. Right. Or you, you have time at night and time in the morning, like a half hour to like kind of take care of yourself, like hygiene wise, Okay. all that stuff. So if you want to write a letter or something, that's, that's when you, that's when you do it. Yeah. Is there ever a time when those guys, kind of take the hat off and, and or shift to more like a normal human or do they maintain that bearing the entire time? From what I can remember, there's, there's one guy like in buds, we had a, we, we call him a proctor okay. who take care of like your personal issues, like anything that he's kind of like the in-between he's still an instructor, right? but he's like the in-between, like you go to him and he figures out what to do with the other instructors. He's kind of the good cop. He's kind of the good cop, but okay. he can also be the bad cop. And there was one of those in Marine Corps, but it wasn't as nice as it was in buds. Okay. You just like, you're scared. Kids. He, was, he was less terrifying. He was less guy. terrifying. And there would be times where like he would, I remember at nighttime, like getting ready for bed, like telling a bedtime story. Everyone would gather around. Uh, he would take off his hat, the drill instructor cap, put it down. And he would like talk like a normal, still having that horse voice voice right. and like talk about something like, Hey, we do this because of this, like giving, like kind of fill in your brain with like uh, motivational stuff, inspiration, whatever it may be. Cause they tear you down and then they build you back up. So yeah. So like the, the first, guy. like the first month probably is like a tear down phase. Like right. you're, you're nothing. You're, you're, you have no discipline. You have no respect, which 
they're not far from the truth. Right. And then they just build you back up to be a respectable man. And I love the discipline, dude. Do you ever want to quit or think about quitting? Never. Never. Never, ever. No. That's not enough for I couldn't. I couldn't live with myself. Right. Coming up with an excuse to right. not finish? No. Uh-uh, no. Right. Way. Absolutely not. How many guys do you think did? did were, was it obvious guys were quitting or guys uh, just kind of disappeared? I, I went, really or? a quitting thing. You never... You're, you're kind of in your own world, man. Right. You know, you're looking down a scope of a rifle and all you see is what that scope sees. You yeah. can't see anything. Horrible situational awareness. Your whole life that's is like kinda that. How, that's kind of how it is in boot camp. You're, just, you're focused on you because you really don't know the teamwork aspects. And I mean, they introduce it to you, but uh, dude, you're just trying to survive, you know? So tell me about the infamous sand pits. The sand pits. The day Eddie became a man. You want to hear that's that it. story? Yeah. So they'd have these sand pits all over uh, Paris Island, and they were, it was so convenient. They would take you to the sand pits, and it was just a big sandbox. A place they could torture you at any moment. Torture you, and they would, you know, you put your rifle, they had like little rifle stands, you put your rifle in the rifle stand, you take off your blouse, you put it next to your rifle, and you jump in the sand pit, and you just stand there at attention, and you just wait for, all right, push-ups now, all right, stop, like uh, side circle hops or uh, jumping jacks, sprints. Eight count bodybuilders. I don't think burpees are out then. So all right. these, all these things, um, you would you would do. And I remember, I mean, a lot of times they would take everyone and put them in there. Like they okay. were they were huge. It wasn't always a one. It was always one of one. There was one that was a one, and that's where I literally broke. Like okay. it broke me. It broke me, but also made me. Yeah. Uh, and I, I will say, like you remember from we talked about last chapter, uh, chapter alpha, how. You remember your first drink? Right. I remember when I became a man. I totally remember it. And uh, we were in formation. I was right shoulder arms holding my rifle so that the rifle's kind of like laying up against my um, my shoulder. And I'm got like this, butt stocks in my hand. And those sand fleas, these sand fleas are all over Paris Island. They're just freaking little baby bugs, kind of maybe a little bit bigger than a gnat. That starts with a G in. Uh, yeah. And then they'd come up and they just bite you. And it, it's like, it's it's not as bad as a bee sting, but it's very annoying and it's very uncomfortable. I went to a wedding in Bluffton, South Carolina, which is you know that same low country. So you kind of probably know what I'm talking about. And the it is a really nice wedding and a really nice resort. And the 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 waitresses at the cocktail hour walked around with trays of bug spray oh, because they were so bad. Be, and because remember, of it, yeah. They were spraying it on top of my head because things were just terrible. It's, re- me it's up. the real deal. They're like yeah. very bad. Very annoying. Yeah. So I was like. And they're watching around. They don't want you. They, you're, they're instilling discipline. They don't want you to move. You got sweat dripping down your eyes, which is burning. You're you're uncomfortable. Your feet hurt. You're trying not to pass out because locking your knees. And there was a little little guy that landed on my forearm, and I just kind of like kind of like using my peripheral vision, trying to move around to find out where all the drill instructors' location. I think there was three or four of them. I want probably three. And I thought I was in the clear, and <laughs> I reached up and just did a little quick swipe. And blood starts kind of coming out where the sand flea was like playing around on my arm. And you hear the worst thing that you ever want to hear. And that's your name. And I just hear recruit penny. And I was like, and I just said fall out. So I freaking did the proper way to get out of formation. And he goes, follow me. And it was, his name was drill instructor Martinez, uh, short stocky guy glasses. Uh, and we, he took me to the sand pit, put my rifle down, took off my blouse Sat in the middle of this, stood at attention in the middle of the sand pit for a, for a little bit, just waiting for the imminent doom that was that was that was coming upon me, and uh, we just started like push ups, the same stuff they always do, just beat you. You're sweating, the sand sticking to you. It's very uncomfortable. You're starting to chafe. Then you start doing sprints, like run run to the. There was like a little building. I can't remember. What, it was like a little like a probably like a landscaping building that like we keep lawnmowers in here so they can do the terrain or whatever on this side. It was always like run, touch the door, then come back. And it was never enough time. Like, hey, you got 45 seconds. Right. You never, it was, you just couldn't do it. Like you, you just like, unless I was like uh, he, Usain Bolt. He was not setting you up for success. He was not setting me up for success, which I thought well, this whole thing was for. Right. <laughs> so I'm like going, I just not making it. And I, and I understand the deal. Like he just wants me to do it again. So I'm doing it. I'm doing it. And buddy, I, t- I tell you what, man, it, it was, it was hours. I, I get, I, I feel like it was put in the schedule. Let's. Beat these dudes down. Let's down see who while. can stay, be disciplined, and if not, let's give them a life lesson. And a life lesson they did. And so I just like I just wasn't making. It. He's like chewing my ass and just going crazy and just 
just talking about things and making me feel worthless mm -hmm. as a human being and as a man. And I start crying right there in the sand pit. Not like, ah, but I'm like, I can just feel the tears. It's mixing with my sweat. My eyes are burning, extremely uncomfortable. I'm like, I want to go home. I want my mommy. Like, I just want to start sucking my thumb, get in the fetal position. Like it was right. just, it sucked. And he can tell he's like, he's breaking and he, and he comes up and he's like, he just starts talking to me, just says a couple things. And it was the right things. I, it was a, it was a God thing for sure. Like hands down. Cause this, I swear to you saved my life. Uh, and it made me who I am today. And he says his things and I'm, and I'm like, all right, cool. He knows I'm broken and we're done. And he walks away and he turns around, run to the shed again and come back in the same amount of time. And I'm like, okay, so we're not done. And by this time, like the shadows from the trees and the buildings are the shifted to the other side. Like we've been there that long. Like I, I remember that I'm like, holy crap. Like, is this legal? Like I'm like, Excuse me. Right. <laughs> like, and so I, I'm doing it and something clicked in me. I'm like, fuck this. I'm like, I'm not feeling sorry for myself anymore. Like, I'm not going to feel Cause I was, I went, I was going down victim lane. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not going to feel sorry for myself anymore. I asked for this. I signed up to come here. I'm, this is, I want to be a Marine. Yeah. And he kept doing it. And, and I was just, the fire was building and the, and as the, the iterations kept going, I got stronger. I was getting faster. Like I'm getting, I'm right. getting worn out. My mental, my mentality was getting so freaking strong. I, I yeah. was like, let's go, dude. I'm like, I will do this all week. Let's freaking go. Uh, and that, that would prove itself in buds. It wouldn't, I would not be phased anymore. And uh, he kept going. And then finally it got to a point when I was just like, let's go. Like my facial expression changed. Like I got hardened. I got really hardened on very that quickly. day. Very quickly. And he came up to me and he goes, this is why we do so. And he talked to me normal. This is one of those normal times. He had a, he had a, he had a heart to heart talk, like a man to man, like a fatherly talk. Right. And um, he's like, this is why we do this. Discipline's so important. It might seem not like a big deal to you, but if that's on the combat field and you don't do what you're supposed to do, men can die. You can die. Could you imagine how your family would feel? Like, and, he, and he goes into this and he has like probably a few minute conversation and I, and I get the point. I understand what he's saying and I understand the discipline. I understand the... Um, what I'm supposed to be doing. And from that day on, you couldn't break me. You could not break me in buds. Buds sucked, but there was never a time where I'm like, you're going to break me you or I'm, I feel it. it just didn't happen. I was like, yeah. I only get stronger as I've learned. And I learned this too. Uh, like if I do like sparring or mm -hmm. whatever, or any fighting stuff and I get hit, it amps me up more. It's not like, oh, boy, better watch. I'm like, oh, yeah, let's go. Like, I just get into it more by more of the, the more of the, I respond to pain. The challenge. I respond to the ch challenge and the pain. I like the pain. The pain makes me go to a different level. I think there's two, two types of people in that situation. When you hit the feel sorry for yourself stage, the Victim. breaking point. Yep. A lot of people would, would. You see that cry, a lot today. Cry uncle. Yep. Right. And we don't have a lot of rites of passage like that mm -hmm. in, in most people. And I think maybe that's one of those differences between military guys and civilians, it's like you have this event or this thing or this you have this tangible evidence that you have done something hard. Right. And somebody in the civilian world might or might not, but there's no like, you know, thing you wear on your shoulder that says, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm hard. There's obviously a method to the madness or not just being mean. Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't think I don't think everyone probably thought that way. It kind of goes back to your mindset. Like, how right. are you going to translate what's happening to your body or, or what they're doing to you? But I translate, they're trying to make me better. And I, and I believe that. Right. Why, why would they want to send people out into the Marine Corps? Not the best they can be. Right. Why would they, why would they want that? Well, your parents, yeah. when you get punished as a kid, mm -hmm. they're not being mean. Right. They're, they're trying to correct you yeah, to better exactly. your life. So you don't do it. So it's, it's for your, your benefit. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So one thing I, that we, we're, we're talking is the first time I thought about it, we, we, which we'll, we'll be talking about, especially when we get to the faith thing, like the, the father piece. Mm -hmm. as, I, as I said something when I was talking about Instructor Martinez, is like he was talking to me like he was fathering me. You don't need to be someone's father to father them. Right. You, you, there, there's so many influences we get from just our, our, uh, our elders that can feed positivity or negativity into our lives. And it kind of just hit me just now as we're talking about it. It's like he fathered me in that moment uh, and mentored me to like, hey, just go, 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 go. And as you, as you found out later in life, younger people can influence you. I mean, 100%. Jason, mm -hmm. younger guy than you, huge positive influence. Your kids. Absolutely. Yep. Right. Yep. 
I would say you, but you're older. Yeah, I'm a little bit older. <laughs> <laughs> so you think that that w- when that shift happened, that's lifelong, right? You've never. It's been lifelong. I didn't think about it much at the time, but as I as I did other things that sucked, it didn't matter. I, I embraced the pain. What what other option do you have besides quitting? Right. You don't have another option. You embrace it and you freaking move on. And like the pain goes away. It's not like it's forever. Right. There's more pain coming. There's more pain coming. And just be ready for that bout. Like right. it's life is like bout after bout after bout, battle after battle after battle in this huge thing we call a war. And you should be ready to go. And you can spend your life worrying about the next pain. Yep. Or just and avoid it, trying to avoid it, or, or just you can don't just, and just, just, just tackle it. Forward. Just tackle it when it comes to your face and be like, "I'm knocking your ass out." That's it. Did it's you your see, choice? Did you see like in buds or later in your career? Did you kind of see the other side of that? Were you able to watch people? Yes. Shift. I saw their a lot in buds. I could see their mind is the thing that quit. It wasn't their body. It wasn't. It was their mind. The mind. The mind. The mind is what shut off and what made them quit. And I'm sure some of it's hard. If your heart's not into it, that's something something you really want. Right. You want to do it for notoriety because a lot of people go to Buds to be a seal. Right. They don't care about the job, what it does to protect fellow Americans. They don't. They don't think about that. They just want the title to be cool. They're already thinking about their book. They're already or, or the, right exactly. So it, you, that's part of your mindset. That's going to be right. your passion. Like what? What is your your motive here? Why are you here? Exactly. So you you could definitely tell. But yeah, the mind. You could just see them. Just the mind crushed and their mind is no different than my mind just my mindset's different yeah there's no different I'm, he's created just like i am yeah and you didn't have as we talked about in the last one of these you didn't have this like hard childhood where you no. grew up on a farm or something in your heart i had a soft childhood if you right. really want to get into it right. yeah i did yeah that all happened that one day yeah 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 it's crazy anything else on this no i think we're good man that pretty much covers uh Short chapter. So short, short chapter, discussion. Bravo. Yeah, I, I think that was like definitely the main point. It was good to talk about it because that was like, it was like my dad with the anchor, you know, as, as small as I might seem, I just remember that day and it just like influenced me. Uh, like you don't quit. You don't right. stop. You just, you keep going and, and it's not, life is not peaches and cream as I like to say. It's a battle, man. It is a freaking battle. And if you're not having battles, I don't believe you're living to your potential. You you should be doing something greater, and you've fallen into the comfort stage and mediocrity. Who the heck wants that? Come on, man. You're not plankton floating around. No, you need to be the shark. So next week we'll get into the the meat of your Marine Corps career. Mm -hmm. Some some failures, some things that change your life. A lot of failures, yeah. And and we'll just go forward from there. Love it, man. This is these are good, dude. I like them. So. If you guys are following along, we hope you guys are loving these podcasts. Hope you guys are loving the book. I'm sure it's. I'm sure no one's reading chapter one, watching the podcast, reading chapter two, watching. There might be Maybe. some, uh, but hopefully this is helping out. Kind of like because we couldn't put it all in a book because it would be a, a really thick book. Yeah. So hopefully this is helping out, and and we're, we're definitely going off on some tangents, which is nice, and talk about life and and the stuff that matters out there. So hopefully you guys are loving it, and if you guys got recommendations. Uh, questions what do you want to know yeah questions let us know so because we're not going anywhere good to go good to go all right guys take it easy be safe